Okay, this is how we set up our intra abdominal, or yes, our intra abdominal bladder pressure setup. I wanted to hang this up every second of each. So, we want to do an intra abdominal pressure for a patient who has, we think, maybe uh, intra abdominal hypertension or compartment syndrome. So, first of all, you have to have a Foley. There's no way to do an intra abdominal bladder pressure without being able to see the into the bladder. So. Step number one, Foley catheters in place. Step number two, we get pressure tubing. This one happens to be an older type of pressure tubing that we're not used to seeing, okay? Um, but any kind of pressure tubing with a, a transducer on it, okay? Spike that into a bag of saline. It does not need to have pressure on it. Again, you only really need pressure on something if you think the blood's gonna back up. So for like your arterial lines and central line and your PA catheters and stuff but for EBDs and for um, intra-abdominal bladder pressures, you don't need a, a pressure bag. So you spike that and then you go ahead and flush the tubing through, okay? And then um, you're gonna need an additional stopcock and you're gonna need a 30 cc syringe. You're gonna connect the stopcock and the syringe together, okay? And then of course, we're doing all of this under sterile technique because we don't want to introduce any bacteria into the patient. We're gonna oh, keep your leg up. <laughs> I don't want to be if you have a full lead in, ma'am. <laughs> uh, we have to wipe this with their purple wipes, okay? Make sure that we get all the bacteria off of there and then we can connect this here, okay? Next, you need a red cable. So we're going to measure pressure. We need, oh, we need a red cable for pressure. And this is going to connect to your transducer. And instead of zeroing at the phlebostatic axis like we do with our A-lines at the level of the heart, we're going to want to level it up level of the bladder, since that's what we're measuring. So it's right around the hip, okay? Open up your transducer to air. Come back up here. You're going to this is defaulting to an art line. We don't want it as an art line. We want to look at it as a CVP. So we select art. We go over to change name art. We change it to CVP. Turns blue. We're good. Now we're going to zero that out. That part's done. That's really the setup of the system. Now to actually do your measurement, it's a little tricky. You're gonna turn your stopcock this way so that the bag is open toward your syringe. You're gonna pull back until you get 25 cc's of saline in there. You have to, it's kind of tricky because you have to squeeze the flush and pull back at the same time to get the fluid to come through. Okay, so once you get 25 cc's in here, it's a 30 cc, cc, 30 cc syringe, but you only need 25 cc's. Then you're gonna turn your stopcock all the way back this way so that the syringe is communicating towards the patient. Then you're going to pinch the tubing off. So we don't want the, the fluid to just go this way into the bag. We want it to go up into the bladder. Next thing we're gonna do is squirt all 25 cc's of fluid in there. I'm not gonna do it because Angie's gonna look like she peed her pants. <laughs> and then immediately turn your stopcock back open this way. So now you can see the communication between the bladder back to the monitor, right? Now you're gonna look at your waveform. You're gonna keep your, this pinched. Your waveform is gonna peak when you are flushing that fluid in, and then it's gonna start to plateau back down, and then it'll kind of reach an equilibrium, like a baseline. So take the first reasonable number that you see in that. It's gonna start out and it's gonna say like 80 or 100 or something. We know nobody, no patient has a bladder pressure of 80 or 100 because they're, it would have been like alien. They would have exploded by now and their guts would be everywhere. So you're going to see something when it plateaus out, it's probably going to be 15 to 20. If it's really, really high, it might be 25 or 30 if they're really, really distended. So that's the number you're going to take. And then once you get your number, then you release. That fluid's going to go back down into the Foley bag. And you just gotta remember then to subtract that 25 cc's back out of your INO when you're uh, taking your output for that hour. Questions about that? All right.